Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to solve this question which states that if G be a group and H be its subgroup, then if we take some element here within this group G, uh, so using this element G, we can and using this subgroup, we can define a coset by this coset representative G, right, which consists of the members of H multiplied together with G, right? So here, if we assume that our group is abelian in nature and the element that we have considered has order 2, what does it mean? G square is identity. So we have to show that this subset, which we are calling by K, which is formed by taking the union of the subgroup H and this coset GH, that also is a subgroup of G. So let's first of all have a look at the first part of the question. We have first of all have to prove that H union GH is a subgroup of G. For that, we first of all prove that it is non-empty. So it definitely contains the identity element. Let's see how H, it is given to be a subgroup of G. So definitely identity is present within it. If it is present within H, so it is also present within this union, which is the union of H union G H. Why? Because if an element is present in any one of the sets, so definitely it is present within their union as well. Correct. So this uh, union is non-empty. So we prove this first part. Now let's prove that that it is uh, this union is closed under multiplication. So that means if we take two elements x and y from h union gh, their multiplication that is x y is also present within h union gh. Now if x and y both are present in this union, what does it mean? We may have four possibilities. First one tell you that both x and y are present in h. In the second one x can be present in H and Y can be present in GH, correct? In the third one, we can say X is present in GH and Y is present in H. And in the fourth one, both of X and Y, they are present in GH. So only these possibilities could be there, correct? So let's discuss all of them one by one, taking the first one first. So if you bo have both X and Y present in H, now, because H is a subgroup of G, so therefore X and Y is present in H and if X and Y is present in H, so definitely it is present in this union, correct? This proves our first part. For the second part, we have considered our X to be present in uh, the subgroup capital H and Y is present in GH. So that means you can take some element small h from the subgroup capital H and you can write Y as GH, correct? Now you multiply both of them x and y so that you get x, y. You can substitute the value of y here because it is coset by the properties of coset. You can write this g outside and x inside. So it is written like this. Now because this x is a member of h, h is a member of h and this capital H is a subgroup hence x, h is also a member of h. Therefore g, h is present in g capital H coset. So if it is present in GH, so it is also present in this union. So this proves our second part. Similarly, for the third part, if X is present in GH, Y is present in H, then XY is present in GH by the same argument above. If it is present in GH, so it is definitely present in the union. And for the D part, if both X and Y are present in GH, so you can write X as GH1 and Y as GH2, where both H1 and H2 are member of capital H, then what would be XY? You can substitute the value of x, you can substitute the value of y and simplify it could be g square h1 h2. What is g square? Because the order of g is given to be 2. So g square is identity. So you can write identity over here, identity into h1 h2, which is h1 h2 only. Correct. And h1 h2, both are members of capital H subgroup. Hence their combination, the multiplication is also present in h. So this x, y is present in H. So it is definitely present in this union. So this proves that whenever you take both x and y present in the union, then uh, their combination x, y is present in H union, G, H for all the cases. Correct. Now next, let's move on to this uh, part where we have to prove that the inverse is also present in this union. So we take some element uh, here. 
we take x from uh, h union g h so what does it mean it mean that x is either present in h or it is present in g h if it is present in h then x inverse is definitely present in h because h is a subgroup of g hence x inverse is present in this union and moreover if this x is present in g h what does it mean it mean that x inverse which you can write as uh, g in g h whole inverse which by the sox shoe property could be written like this h inverse g inverse now because the group g is given to be abelian in nature so uh, you can commute both of them so it could be g inverse h inverse right now what is g inverse g inverse is g why because the order of g is given to be 2 so you can write g square as g into g is equal to e now by the property of inverse so what does it mean it means that g is the inverse of g hence g inverse is g now it is written <laughs> in again in this form where you have g into some element of h so it is present in g h so what does it mean h, uh, this x inverse is present in g h so it is definitely present in this union so in both the cases x inverse is present in this union hence the uh, union h union g h which is k that is closed under inverses and the group operation multiplication so therefore by two step subgroup test this uh, union is a subgroup of g this proves one part of the proof right now in the second part of the proof they are asking to us that is your proof valid if we drop the assumption of g is abelian let's just see this statement only if you drop this condition of abelian here correct so you cannot commute them if you cannot commute them here so th this could not uh, this could just be written like this so this is not equal to g h inverse correct because we do not have the condition of normality here because left coset is not equal to right coset here in general so therefore this condition would not be there hence this would not be present in the union of h and g h so therefore we cannot conclude this to be a subgroup however read the full statement here they are saying if you drop this condition g is abelian and take this condition that k is what instead of taking h to be any subgroup you now take the subgroup to be the center of uh, g correct in that case what is center of g if you remember it contains all the elements from uh, the group G such that it commutes with all other members of the group G, right? The members of group G which commute with all other members of the group G, they are present in this center of G, correct? So using this assumption, I say the proof remain valid if we drop the condition of G being abelian and consider H to be the center of G, hence our K becomes this in that case the proof remain valid why because we have problem here when we wanted to commute them correct now because we are given h as the center of g so that means this h is present in the center of g so it would commute with every member of g in particular it would commute with g inverse as well so if it commute here we have this step there and we have this step this step and we have our proof there is no issue with our proof hence we say the proof remain valid if we drop the condition of g being abelian as well as we take h to be the center of g right so i hope you understood this question well well that is it for this video thank you for watching